We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Book Chats with Mostly Books. Yep. I'm Jody. I'm Jen. And tonight we are talking about the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. Yeah. Um. Okay, I, I have a funny for later, <laughs> but <laughs> I'll save that part. Why don't you start with a synopsis? So Guinevere has come to Camelot to marry Arthur. Um, one problem, she's not Guinevere, and she's and she's also a witch, and magic has been ousted forcibly from Camelot. Like, all out forbidden. All out forbidden, and Merlin has sent Gwen this Guinevere and told her, like, you have to protect Arthur, he needs you, and she's like, I got this. And then we've learned what the Guinevere deception is, and there are many. There are many. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can I tell my funny? Yes. <laughs> I just didn't want to do it before the synopsis. So I'm reading this, and in the beginning, you know, it's, she's, I'm Guinevere, but I'm not Guinevere, or it's the queen that's not the queen. And I'm like, this, you know, this is clearly not Guinevere. This yeah. is so weird. So I'm telling my husband about it, and I'm like, so I'm reading the Guinevere, and I look down because I can't remember the title all the way for some reason. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm reading the Guinevere, huh? Oh! <laughs> Deception. That makes perfect sense now. <laughs> I had, I like I knew I knew the title of the book, but I had no idea what it was about. So I got like a couple chapters in, and I'm like, "What is this about?" And then I went and reread the synopsis or the flat copy because right. I, I read it, but so long ago that I forgot it. Well, and you know, honestly, in the beginning, it was sort of annoying me, and then I was like, "Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I get this." But besides that, what'd you think? I really liked this Me one. Too. I did too. Um, you know, we had read uh, Kirsten White's books in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly which one of us chose this book. I feel like it was very mutual choosing in this time. I think because there's like a lot of books that will like come up as we're doing whatever we're doing. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, we want to read this. Oh, we want to read this. So maybe both. Mo I felt it was very, yeah. Yeah. A joint effort pick on this. And we did good. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a side note tangent thing. What did you think of The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein? I really liked it. Okay. Uh, I also really like Frankenstein. And Elizabeth doesn't get much page time in that one. Okay. That um, makes me feel much better. Yeah. I really like that one. It's very... It is dark, as mm. the title tells you, but it's... And it got darker as you went. <laughs> yeah, but it, like, fills in a lot of gaps that are, like, in Mary Shelley's. And not mm -hmm. to say gaps that things are just missing, but there's parts that you just don't see because of where the story doesn't go. Right. So you see those in this, in the retelling, and I really liked it. I did, too. And it was funny because I was talking to some other people who have read that recently, and they were all kind of like, hmm, it wasn't my favorite. And I was like, oh. oh. I, I thought, I thought. I it was, thought it was good. This is good. And I thought everybody thought that it was a good one. It was. I thought so. <laughs> so thank you. You joined my, my band. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. That usually happens. Mm. Like nine times out of ten we'll agree and then there'll be one where we're just like. We're very opposite. Very opposite. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> All right. Well, back to Guinevere. Yeah, back to Guinevere. <laughs> um, do you want to start with characters or writing tonight? What's your preference? Uh, do you want to start with Arthur stuff in general? Sure. I mean, have you read a lot? I have read one. One other one. <laughs> and it was, it's like a YA, like, sapphic Arthur, King Arthur retelling set in space. So, mm -hmm. not your typical. So, not your typical background on the Arthur. Did you watch, like, The Sword and the Stone? Or... I mean, probably, but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> That's funny. Because I remember when we initially started talking about it, I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think I read a lot either. And then as I'm, like, reading it, and I'm like, gosh, I'm really, really familiar with these characters. <laughs> I'm to the point where I'm actually, like, seeking out all these other specific nights that I'm like, why do I know? Oh, right. <laughs> I've read a lot. <laughs> like, most of the Arthur stuff I've read has been in English classes. So, like, read The Green Knight. Yeah. Read Fairy Queen. Or at least said I read most of it. Um, I, that was hard. But you didn't read um, Alfred Lloyd Tennyson's mm -mm. ones. Okay. I didn't think so. I've also done, like, The Mists of Avalon, and this did give me hard feels in a good way for Mists oh, of Avalon. that's good. Um, which I read many, many, many moons ago and really liked at that time. It was very much that book that was like, oh my gosh, there's so many amazing books out in this world. I've been limiting myself <laughs> um, kind of moments with that book. So yeah, I've read a lot <laughs> of, of Arthurian legends. Like I know who the characters are and generally like how they relate to each other. Um, 
but so yeah. So you knew of Arthur. Yeah, I knew Arthur existed. I knew there's like Camelot, Camelot, Merlin, Morgan, Morgana, the sword, Excalibur, Excalibur, Guinevere, Lancelot. So you knew yeah. a lot of the key players. Morgan I know the their names. <laughs> You knew there was going to be an inevitable betrayal. I know who a Mordred is, yeah. Like, because that Once in Future covers some of that too, but I think it uses some different um, mythology than this one used. Yeah. This felt pretty standard for the most part, mm-hmm. as far as your normal Arthurian mythology goes. I mean, she obviously turned a few things that I yeah. really enjoyed, <laughs> um, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, it's the norm Arthur, Camelot, Sword. Guinevere. I really liked that this was, you know, and most of them, you don't hear a lot about Guinevere, except for, oh, Guinevere, you know, ran off with Lancelot. Or Guinevere ruined Camelot. Guinevere ruined Camelot, <laughs> yes. A very rarely do you hear good things about her. And, you know, I mean, she's just, yeah, the damsel in distress or the one that broke it all up. Not much else. Yeah. <laughs> so I really appreciated Kirsten White giving Guinevere a new look. Mm-hmm. Um, and a focus, like a whole book about her, was great. A whole trilogy about her. I know. And it was not <laughs> the Guinevere that, I mean, yes, I, I, my only complaint with Guinevere is I thought she was going to be right off the bat way more fierce and strong than she is. Mm-hmm. Now, I think there's a lot of reasons as to why she's not. And we'll she get to, to that. She has to start somewhere. She has to grow. Yeah. Again, you need room to grow in three yep. books, right? Yep. So I have a lot of excitement for where she's headed. <laughs> yes. So anyway. Should we do characters since we're, we're already on, here? On Guinevere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What other thoughts do you have on Guinevere? I really liked her, and I like how she's friends with other female characters. Mm-hmm. Like, that's important besides just having her various love interests. I love her. Um, Lady's like, Maid. Mm hmm. Bran- Brangian. Who's Brangian. I, that's what, how we've settled on. We've. The it's name. a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, keep going. Anything else on Guinevere? Uh, I just, I, she's just clever. She's, mm-hmm. cl- yeah, like, she is clever, and she's like, I'm going to get this done. But there's also, like, maybe it's just I've read too many fantasy novels at this point, but I can see the points where she's going to, for, like, the gaps in her memory, and, like, mm-hmm. that means something. Mm-hmm. Or when she has, like, a, a thought but doesn't connect it to other things yet, I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I feel bad for her sometimes. I'm like, I oh, know yeah. where you're going. I feel like we need to talk about this later with spoilers. Because yeah. there's, there's lots to discuss right there. Yeah, I feel for her on all So, that. yes, I'm attached to her. Which I also think is why she doesn't come across as so fierce. Because she just was kind of set up to not succeed in some ways. And yeah. we, I want to talk about that again later as well. We should write this down. <laughs> <laughs> um talk about Arthur. Yeah, anyway, I also I had another oh. thought on Guinevere. Oh. I liked that she was really determined and had a purpose and mm. was really driven, so she wasn't feeling like she needed to be saved. Already we were kind of getting away the damsel in distress idea, yeah. um, and moving forward to a more modern female character, which I liked. And yeah. Like, like, she has points that she still needs help, but it's... But she helps them as much as yeah, they help like her. Yeah, like, it's just they're different. Each of the characters has different strengths and yeah. like the way they're useful. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like one of you can't do anything. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think she can do way more than we're seeing. So we'll, we'll come all back to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Let's talk about Arthur. What did you think of Arthur? I liked Arthur. He gets under my skin sometimes, gets under my nerves, because it's like, he's so, like, lawful. Like, he's the lawful good if we're doing D&D alignments. And he holds to that almost all the time. And it's, like, very frustrating because it's, like, we want you to value your friendships as more than, like, chess pieces to you. And, like, we see that sometimes, but then he's, like, I have to make this decision because I have to be this, like, bright light for the future. And it's just, like, oh, you're 18. This is a lot on you. So I, like, (laughs) I guess I also, like, pity him. But, like, and mostly like him because he is sweet when he's not being King Arthur. So, Yeah. (laughs) I <laughs> struggled with Arthur. I wanted to like him, but he annoys me. <laughs> He's so dang perfect about everything. And yes, I I liked the moments where he shed the king part, but at the same time, I'm almost not sure if that's really who he is mm-hmm. because he's so much the other king and loft, loft, lofty, thank you, <laughs> character that I just, I don't, I need to see more. 
we will see in book two. But yeah. right now, he's not my favorite. <laughs> like, I think he, like, is, like, we don't see a ton of him because even that's the thing with Guinevere that she's, always, like, Arthur's always gone. Mm. So I think it's, like, we're humanizing Arthur as much as we're humanizing Guinevere, but just from a different ideal. And he's so not human. Not yet. I we're going to see more of him. I think there might be something else there as well that is just not revealed in book one. We'll see. I'm hoping. Because right now, he is so one-sided <laughs> and bleh <laughs> that I really hope that if this is really him, that he needs to figure out a better balance for his personal and work life. <laughs> I'm not sure you're going to get that, because adults can't even figure that out, much less an 18-year-old. No, but they can a little bit better than this. <laughs> this was this is too much. This is too much putting Camelot before everything else in his life, including Guinevere, which he's always like, yeah, I wanted to do this for you, but I can't. Like, it really just irritated me to an extent. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, moving off of Arthur, what did you think of Mordred? I liked Mordred, because it's like... He's it's like our he's like sarcastic. He's like way too clever. He also like values stories and like how mm -hmm. he tells them and are important. And I thought I, that might come back to more because um, I expected more of a storytelling thread. But I like him. And then he's like the knight that no one can beat, and we learn yeah. why no one can beat him. Um, and like I was suspicious of him, but not for the right reasons. Like that was he was a very good red herring for me. Right, not for me. Kirsten White got me. Yeah, no, it went right <laughs> along with what I expected for an Arthurian tale. <laughs> like, I expected some sort of betrayal because Mordred, but then, like, it didn't come, and I'm like, wait, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be that one, but then it was just something else. Yeah. Um, there's another character I don't want to talk about yet, because I don't want to have that be spoiled yet. Is it the yet. patchwork night? Yes, so I think we should come back to that later. Mm -hmm. um, but are there any other characters that you want to talk about. I like Dindrain. Oh, she was funny. I enjoyed her actually as well. The um, companion noblewoman that Guinevere chooses. I yeah. liked it because it was somebody that nobody else really understood or really paid attention paid, to. Yeah, I didn't care about. I really liked that. And what and, and I liked the way her story ended. Yeah. So that was Dindrain, good. Dindrain's good. Or the part where like all the other like court ladies are gossiping about Guinevere's cycle or her courses. Oh. And then Dindrain's like, I will stop them at, if they yes. start to talk about it. And I'm like, you're a good friend. Good friend, yeah. This is good. Yep, yep. So I that enjoyed was that. And it was just a nice, like, somebody you want to just go hang out, forget about some of your worries, and have a good time with. Yeah, and she just, like, chatters. Like, yeah. one of your always says she's, like, happily chattering in the background, and it, like, distracts her and mm -hmm. calms her down. So I'm yeah, like, that's a good sweet. thing. And then I, I think we already said that we really liked Brangian. Mm hmm. She was amazing. I yeah. enjoyed her. I liked where her story went, too. I did, too. I'm ex yeah, excited for more of that. Um, anybody else? Uh, Tristan and Isolde? Um, Do I talk about that or talk about that later? Uh, let's talk about that later okay. as well. Um, so, yeah. We'll come back. We're going to have a lot of spoilers. Oh, we talk about Merlin? <sighs> Merlin, to me, was classic Merlin. Always out of time. <laughs> always confusing. Sees the big picture, doesn't tell everyone. <laughs> sort of frustrating. <laughs> and, and once in the future, like, Merlin is a main character and a point of view character. So oh, I bet that was fun. It was fun. Uh, he is fun in that one. Um, so that one, you get a lot of Merlin's perspective. Mm. And then this one, he's... Very minor. Yeah, he's very confusing, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's, like, spent he, too much time in between times and, yeah, it, and like, now is confused himself. Yeah. He's everything that the book tells you who he is, but it's just kind of, like, frustrating. You're as frustrated as Guinevere because it's like, Merlin won't give you a straight mm -hmm. answer. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of, like, seeing him on the sides or in mm -hmm. your peripheral. You don't really ever... Or you see him and he's like, go away immediately. And yeah. then, like, leaves. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, we worked so hard to get here. Yeah, and right. And this is all you're giving us. That was not helpful. <laughs> okay, writing? What do mm -hmm. you think of the writing? I like the writing. <laughs> and there's, like, interludes calling him interludes mm. from another point of view i don't want to say who the point of view is even though it kind of i think you can call her the the dark, dark queen, queen because we we know that right off the bat that it's the dark queen yeah who was was what was banished to some extent we think yeah so like before the book starts arthur has defeated the forces of darkness and like quelled magic and camelot is safe yay and merlin is banished and merlin is banished because all magic had to go um 
And then we get these parts of the Dark Queen coming through and yeah like spying on Guinevere like spying on Guinevere spying on the queen not queen yeah and like telling us about like other parts uh, other people mm-hmm. in the castle like oh this one has a heart of chaos yeah and that's a whole thing yeah yeah the chaos thing or, or the, no the, the interlude dark- yeah thing, like well, the dark and queen thing you're kind of I feel like well I'm not gonna say that yet either okay We'll just leave that one alone for now. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, I thought the writing was really good. The pace, I would say, is like a medium-style pace. It's Mm -hmm. not ever boring, but there's a lot of, like, oh, let's go here, let's do this. It feels like there's a lot of research that went into this. Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine how much stuff she had to read. Yeah. Like, especially the clothing, like, Guinevere's clothing, or that she can't show her wrists. (gasps) I enjoyed that, actually. (laughs) Although it was, like, really? (laughs) Yeah, it's like, oh, really? But I'm like, that's a very specific detail. You definitely, like, found that in some sort of source. There was a couple scenes where, like, they ran to hide her wrist because it had, like, her sleeve had moved up too high. Yeah. (laughs) And she can't wear jewelry, which I thought was interesting. She can't wear jewels in her hair. Yeah, that's what it was. She can still wear jewelry. No, she can't wear jewelry. She can wear, like, the crown, but she can't wear, like, necklaces and that. Oh, I thought it was just in her hair. No, she can't wear it in her hair, but she could wear the crown. Later. Yeah, but then, like, Arthur gives her the, like, Which circle is in her hair, thing. Yeah. But she can't wear jewelry otherwise. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Which I was like, that's very interesting that you're allowed to court with that, but not be wearing it when you're married. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. Totally had to have a lot of research in it. And, it, I mean, you move around a lot. We went all over Camelot area, yeah. outside of Camelot. I wish I had a map. I would have liked a map, too. I also kind of really would have liked to seen a picture of the castle and the stones. I thought that was a really cool. Because it's like there's a lake in front of it, but the lake also goes underneath the mountain, but the castle's in the mountain. And it's, like, carved into the, chiseled into the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's a river somewhere, too. Yeah. Water's a thing. It is. It is. It is, is, isn't it? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Anything before we ruin this book? For everyone. Um, it's very pretty. No, it is pretty, I as really... is the hardback. Yeah. I like the cover. I like mm-hmm. the cover for the sequel, mm-hmm. which, oh my gosh, I need that one now. I think it comes out in, like, November. That's not soon enough. <laughs> so, not not overly far, but uh, not, like, soon. Yeah. Totally agree. Because <laughs> it it's not like it really ends on a cliffhanger, but you but... get... Stuff gets dropped in the end game of it that you're like, oh what? my god. And I think that everybody has such amazing potential. Like, I just need to know wh- what's going to happen and mm-hmm. where they're all going to go. Their storylines. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, spoilers. Spoiler. Spoilers! Turn us off and come back later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> okay. We hope you've all left now. <laughs> Please leave if you are going to leave. <laughs> okay, do we want to talk about the Patchwork Knight? Were you surprised yes. when you found out how who the Patchwork Knight, which is the knight that was, like, trying to beat all of these other, like, inspiring knights yeah, in order and... to get to fight to Arthur to become on his 12? And... and Guinevere's like, that's a fairy knight because they don't act right. human. Yeah, they stand um, too still. Yeah. And he kept being like, no, no, it's that's not it at all. There's like, no magic there. He's holding an iron sword. He can't be... Oh my gosh! Yep, they told us that just from. <laughs> oh yeah, we'll come back to that because I was snickering at that reveal. <laughs> I was like, "Why are you making such a big?" Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, now I get it. I'm good. Yeah. Um. So, I personally was not surprised at all who the patchwork tonight was going to be. I was surprised about something else about that. I wasn't because I forgot Lancelot existed. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it had to be Lancelot. Lancelot is the best fighter aside from Mordred. Yeah. Um. So it ha- there was no other option that this could be. No, oh, yeah. I was I surprised thinking. that Lancelot was a girl, which I loved. I wasn't because the only other Arthur retelling I've read, Lancelot is a girl. Oh well, see, I haven't read that one. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I've seen this before. Which is why her fighting style was so different. Mm-hmm. Um, but not magically inclined. No. <laughs> So I super enjoyed that part and that twist. And I'm excited to see where the Guinevere Lancelot storyline is going to go. Mm-hmm. Is it going to follow true and have them have a romantic thing? Which I'm hoping is the case. <laughs> I think it will. Um, or is it just going to be that he's just going to be, or she's just going to be the loyal knight for Guinevere. Yeah. And a good friend. 
I kind of want, like, Arthur, Lancelot, and Guinevere to be, a like, thing. a happy, polyamorous trio kind of thing. That would be amazing. Because, like, Arthur, like, very much admires Lancelot and is, like, kind of Lancelot's biggest fan. <laughs> oh, he's such a fanboy for her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Lancelot's, like, very devoted to Arthur, but also to Guinevere. And I'm mm. like, this could and work. I, I think she's even more devoted to Guinevere at this yeah. stage than to Arthur. And, like, Guinevere and Lancelot are very sweet. And then, like, Guinevere and Arthur have this potential to be really sweet when they're, like, honest with each other. Yeah, they they could become... I mean, it could it could work. It could work. <laughs> Please don't let me down, Kirsten White. Please don't let me down. <laughs> Um, okay, do you want to talk about the water part of Guinevere? Oh, should we talk about, like, the Guinevere, like, the, the first, when Arthur's like, so who are you really? And, like, Guinevere's identity? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, like, it's the first chapter, Guinevere's going through, like, they can't know who I am, I'm gonna be killed if they do, oh my gosh. So then she gets married, and it's, like, up in Arthur's room, and she's, like, kind of panicking. Right. And then he's like, so, who are you really? <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> and it, I really liked it because it, like, they were, like, honest with each, with each other on that front. And, like, they could, like, work together. Well, and, and like, he knew. And he knew, too. Because we find out that's a whole, that, that he and Merlin had whole cooked up this scheme. Yeah, but we don't know that yet. And you first you just think that. it's just like, oh, this is good. Right. It's, like, all the best parts of, like, fake marriage or fake dating. Yeah, I thought that too. And also keep in mind that while she's walking to that room, she's like whispering. Well, she did it the night before on the travel. She whispers her name to herself because mm-hmm. she's trying to hang on to her identity. She forgets it by the end of the book. And then she whispers it once more time into the flame and the flame goes out and she no longer remembers her name. Which, what is her name? What is her name? <laughs> I feel like that is a big, like, we have to know this. I feel like because that get... is going to maybe answer a lot of questions. I think too. we'll get it at the end of book two. The end. Well, I feel like the structure of, like, how trilogies work. Yeah. It's going to get sooner. I need it sooner. <laughs> I'm not saying it couldn't be sooner, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get it till the end of book two. Okay. That's fine. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about with her before maybe the water thing is that um, she talks really early on about how Merlin, her father, even though she has a hard time saying that word, pushed, like, magic into her mind, like, Mm -hmm. specifically her not magic, which is what she mostly uses to protect Arthur from this magical whatever chaos that's coming. But, yeah, whatever threat. Merlin is is very vague. He didn't didn't set us up very well. Yeah. (laughs) And then she also practices fire magic to an extent because she's so afraid of water that Mm -hmm. she cannot go towards any water. Like, she doesn't even let rain on her. She doesn't bathe. She uses fire to, like, cleanse herself instead of a shower. Yeah. Um, Because water is good for scrying. And she always says that she has, like, a lesser power than Merlin. You know, she makes comments to that a lot. Is Merlin actually her father? Or is he just her father? Like, he took her in and, like, raised her, not her, like, biological father. I think he took her from the Lady of the Lakes, water. Yeah. Because she has this weird, like, memory about being drowned and has, like, which is what all of her water issues stem from. Mm-hmm. But we also learned that when you replace a memory, you have to make it so painful that you don't ever want to pick, that person ever wants to yeah. pick at it. Which is what she's doing. And she just needs to go into the water. <laughs> <laughs> at one point, she's like, I'm going to jump in the river. Yes! I was so excited! <laughs> I thought she was actually going to jump in the river. And then... She does it. Because I think all of her questions of who she is will be answered. Well, and she also talks like water wants to fill, so it would fill, like, the missing parts of her memory. Yes. Yeah, I also really think she's going to have an affinity for water, and that fire and not magic is what Merlin made her think were her gifts to, like, mute her powers. I think she's going to become an incredibly badass character in book <laughs> two. I'm really hoping that's where we're headed. I hope Anyways, so, too. I don't know. <laughs> Well, because, like, the, okay, uh, now we're just jumping around the plot, but the lady, like, they break in, she goes to find Merlin with Lancelot, because she's like, I need to ask my crazy dad some questions. I have many questions. So they go, and they, like, break into his, like, time bubble cave His cave, where he's sealed into his cave. No, he's not sealed in yet. Isn't he? And she breaks in. Yeah, because she, he got sealed into the cave. Yeah, okay, that, which is also standard Arthurian legend. Oh, yeah, it is. Huh. Anyway, so she breaks in, and he's like, you gotta go, you can't be here, like, you can't do this. And She'll then find you. She'll find you. And then the Lady of the Lake shows up and threatens Merlin with, like, give it back, or you, you sto- took something you of took mine. You took something from me. Yeah. And Guinevere thinks it's Excalibur, because that sword went in the lake, and then it came out. But then Merlin's always like, my dearest, 
Yeah, I can't remember her name. It started with an N. Nine. Something. Something. Um, something yeah. Welsh. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But, like, Guinevere's, like, very convinced it's Excalibur. And, like, Excalibur, we end up finding out, like, drains magic. It's like yeah. a black hole for magic. Yeah, which and I thought was really cool. It, like, makes Guinevere sick every time she's near it and, like, kills magic trees and all sorts of stuff. So, like, that doesn't make sense. No, not to mention, Merlin keeps saying, you know, um, we can't let her find you. We can't mm-hmm. let her see you. Did you already say that part? Sorry. I mean, you may have already said that. I don't, re- I don't that. remember. But, like, it's very clear that Guinevere can't be found. The whole point of, I'm sure, why she was sent to Arthur was so Guinevere wouldn't be found. Because Guinevere could yeah. either be the threat yeah. or the savior, is my guess. Yeah. Depending on how she falls. Depending on choices. very Umbrella Academy. But she may... Is that a problem? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't, I'm just saying I think she has the potential to go either way. Yeah. And that's what the, the reason she's there. <laughs> on top of the Dark Queen issue. Yeah. Because yeah. I think the Dark Queen We have to talk about that at one point, but I had something else about Sorry. Uh, um, oh, yeah, because at about three quarters of the way book through... Arthur, because she's like, we have, I have to protect you from the Dark Queen. It's this, it's this. I had, oh my gosh, Guinevere's freaking out, mm-hmm. and Arthur's just kind of like, so we should chat. We should <laughs> chat. Um, Guinevere isn't there to protect Arthur from anything. She is there to be protected and to be hidden away. And Arthur knew the whole time. The whole time. He and Merlin had a plan. Yeah, and I think there's more to that plan mm-hmm. than we know. Because he also keeps making a point of being like, but you need, do you like, do you want to be my queen? I hope you want to be my queen. He also wants a friend. I want you to choose to be my queen. He does want a companion. He's lonely. Like a friend companion, yeah. Like, your, yeah. Life partner, platonic friend, forever kind of person. Maybe. No, I don't know that he could, you know, in some, he's like buddies with Lancelot. But I'm not sure that will fill the void. Yeah. OT3, give it to me. That's a whole different thing. (laughs) I can solve all these problems. Okay. Do we want to talk about Mordred Mordred? and then segue into the Dark Queen? Yeah. Okay. So Mordred is Arthur's nephew, but Mordred is like like two years older than Arthur. So he's like 20. At one point he says he's 19, so maybe he's almost 20. But he's... The son of Arthur's sister. Morgan. Morgan Le, Le Fay. And. The Green Knight. The Green Knight. And his grandmother is Ingrain. the Dark Queen. A.K.A. the Dark Queen. So, Igraine is Arthur's mother? Yeah. Arthur's mother's the Dark Queen? Yeah. Is this normal? Assuming it's that grandmother. I'm assuming it's Igraine because Igraine's the one who We've Merlin heard about. tricked the husband like, you know, yeah. the, the whoever wanted to, um... Uther, basically. Like, yeah, Uther. Gosh, why couldn't I think of his name? Well, because Duh. he's a so piece Uther, of crap. <laughs> uh, disguises himself as Egraine's husband that she's married to because yeah. of Merlin, which then conceives Arthur. So Arthur's and... born out of rape. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, I will say I'm really glad she didn't actually go down the other way that a lot of Arthur legends go, where Morgan and our, um... Yeah, Morgan and Arthur have, yeah. have Mordred. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one. So I was kind of glad. It, it, not that the rape, which I think happens in most of them, unfortunately, yeah. is good, but I was glad there was less incest. One of yours at one point, like, Arthur's family tree is, like, twisted and messed up. Oh and my I'm God. like, that's a nice way of saying incestuous. <laughs> so true. Yeah. So anyway, yes, I'm assuming Igraine is the Dark Queen, because what are the grandmother have we talked about? Yeah. Yeah. So, Mordred is part magical then, obviously, because of the Green Knight. Yeah, because he's half, he says he's, like, half face, so he can, like, hold iron yeah. swords, but it's not a pleasant experience. Damn. And that's why he wins every fight, because he has nothing to lose, because mm-hmm. not, there's nothing he's afraid of. I was like, oh my gosh. I know. And so, he just thought you were competent. You know, and in some mythologies, too, Morgan is also magically inclined and green yeah. was magically inclined in some so it, it doesn't surprise me that the the dark queen is there yeah well it's like morgan Le Fay, morgan the I, fairy yeah i thought she was going to be the dark queen i really thought that's what i thought so too that was where we were headed because mm-hmm. i asked you i'm like morgan it, the dark queen's morgana right and you're like oh yeah who else could it have been i did not expect it to be a grain you're yeah. right 
I was wrong. <laughs> I think we were both still early in the book at that point, too. We were, yeah. But, <laughs> but there was... Okay, so Mordred's whole thing... So the Dark Queen is... Her soul, like, left her body. She, like... Well, they, they killed the body, but... They killed the body, but couldn't... her soul left before they could destroy her soul. Which... Well, they, they... But they captured the soul into the soil. Well, she did. She fled into the okay. soil. Then why did she need to be released? Because she didn't have a body again. Okay. And like the and Merlin put the trees in the forest to sleep. Right, that's what it was. Yeah. So she couldn't like. She couldn't come up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until Guinevere woke the forest. I'm telling you. Because Mordred said, "Hey, wake the forest so they can kill." Kill that dude. Evil doer. Melagond, whatever. Well, the... his name literally means evil doer. <laughs> Yeah, who was who was a minor character, but made the plot really happen. Yeah, so like we need the forest to kill him, so then it can't come back on Arthur. And Guinevere's like, "Okay, I'll wake the forest." And then I think I can do that. Yeah, and then she does, and it gets way out of with hand. her blood. Oh yeah, man, it's that was blood magic. I know what else would it have been, right? <laughs> um, that got way out of hand, and then up rose the Dark Queen. Did she? She actually crawl out, or yeah, she yeah, okay, like I thought so. crawl. Yeah. With all her spiders and whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we definitely have a big threat coming in book two with the Dark Queen actually being up and out. More than made points, though, about, like, bringing magic back. I agree. And that, like, Guinevere is stifled and smothered in Camelot, and they're like, they hate what you are. And how can you like Excalibur when it's yeah. killing part of your soul? Yeah. And, like, how can you are at home here, you're happy here, you're free here, like, come, like be with me be free and i'm just like he's kind of making points i i know <laughs> i am never a fan of banishing magic all the way yeah. ever ever i feel like that just leads to problems as it's as it totally is <laughs> it's meant it's caused many problems and, i mean it's not surprising too because the people in camelot were already practicing still i mean they mm. had you know a like rich Roslyn history and... of um paganism in their yeah. culture i mean i love that that's also dueling which is also very standard the christianity and paganism um but anyway like Rosalind, do we you know i who i never thought was the threat to yeah i'm like this is a red she was just yeah a character practicing magic to save her like family so and we've read too many about like books about like women being persecuted for witchcraft and then that's like that's a whole thing that's just mm -hmm. what they tell you it is so um on a Rosalind note my favorite line in this book was on um i think it's like around 2 30 and it's something it's yeah. very specific i really liked it <laughs> <laughs> you know it's good when i've memorized the page number um oh yes women are strongest when bearing one another's pain we each take a little on ourselves. no one dies and we all heal together Oh, that was a good one. I loved that line. <laughs> that summed everything up for me in life. <laughs> um, so I liked Rosalind. That was the whole tangent on that. <clears throat> Back to the Dark Queen. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other? I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be excited for it to be Ygrain and then... Who, I mean, what other granny have we met? <laughs> Unless it's the Green Knight's mom? That would make sense because she's fae. But... I think it's better if it's E. Grain because then too. Arthur has to deal with, like, his past. Oh, yeah. And Guinevere has to deal with her past. So, so like, what are your thoughts on Guinevere? I mean, do you think Guinevere... You don't think she's Merlin's daughter? I don't think. She's... No, because, like, and even in the beginning, she calls him father, but she, she's also called, like, his favorite student mm -hmm. or his pupil. And I'm like, that. And she can't remember what she did when Merlin was helping Arthur for all those years. Yeah, and she can't remember her mother. She can't remember her name. She can't There's, like, there's very plot-significant memories she's missing. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to know why the lake outside of Camelot... Has no magic in it? Yeah, Like, where the Lady of the Lake go? I still think it's could be Guinevere. I know we saw the Lady of the Lake, but I'm not convinced that Guinevere isn't still somehow the Lady of the Lake. Maybe she's been split or something. Or maybe the magic's in the river. Because I think there was a part where they like they said there's magic in the river, but yeah, there's not magic it was, in the lake. Yeah, it, it did, because the, the lake was cut off and the river continued. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not convinced that's totally true. I don't think Guinevere's the Lady of the Lake. I think they're related somehow, though. Like her daughter. Maybe. Like that would make that would make sense if then Merlin is her father and why Merlin keeps calling the so lady of the lake think? like dear. It's a theory. Okay, hmm. I'm it, okay with that. It could 
work. It could work. I'm good with that. Because I think we were supposed to notice how Merlin is, like, fond of the Lady of the Lake. Yes. I mean, they obviously had a kinship of some sort. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was a romantic one it's... or more of a common, we've it, worked together it gave and me, like, old side to side vibes. together. So. so I didn't get that. But I'm not disputing yeah. it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, it's felt this way, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it totally could have been. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. So what do you have hopes for for Mordred? Like, do you think he's going to become a villain in book two? Like, because I didn't feel he was very villain-esque. Well, I still like him because I think he's kind of right. I like him, too. Um, He's all, like, he's kind of, also, he doesn't ever lie to Guinevere. Mm -mm. He doesn't tell her the whole thing or tell her all the details or he lets her think things that aren't true, but he never outright lies to her. I think he's probably the most honest with her. And I think they have a really great friendship. Mm -hmm. I never thought he was untrustworthy. Yeah, which was very convincing. (laughs) I'm still not convinced he has bad intentions towards Guinevere. Yeah. (laughs) I think he just wants a different kind of monarchy. (laughs) Do you think he wants to rule Camelot? Or he just thinks Arthur should, like, pull the wool from over his eyes or something? I think he probably will want to rule Camelot. That's He's just seems ambitious yeah. just waiting and biding his time <laughs> but I don't know That's I don't know either because he also like seems to very much care about Arthur which I thought that until that end yeah. then he said some really like not great things about Arthur that I was like huh but Arthur kind of needs to hear it <laughs> but he's not that good of an actor is he I don't know I don't know <laughs> I don't know We'll have to wait a couple more months to find out. I hope Mordred doesn't disappoint me. I, I bet he won't. Your theories are almost m- always way more on point than mine are. I, get, <laughs> I tend to go very off outlandish and off to left field, right in this case. Because <laughs> I always have weird ex- ex- expectations, not expectations, but weird wants. <laughs> Fantasy novels get weird. They can. <laughs> Um, anything else you're itching to talk about with this one? Uh, I think we ca- There's a dragon! I wondered if you are going to talk about the dragon. I enjoyed the dragon. <laughs> it made me sad, though. It made me sad. Yeah. I think there's going to be a dragon in the second I hope book. there's more dragons. Like, please give it's me more dragons. so sad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what else to say to that, other than it was sad to see he was the last of the line. That's it. I was glad there's a dragon. Yeah. I wasn't was expecting a dragon in book one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I totally was. Oh. Huh. <laughs> well, we had George. Now we have a dragon, so. <laughs> they go together. They go together. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, Tristan. And an oh, Isolde. yeah. And Isolde. Yeah. Um, my favorite part is that they flipped that script as well, because, you know, Tristan and Isolde is such a long story standing of romance and star-crossed lovers and all that. Um, but I loved that. Issa was actually in love with um, Brangian. Yeah. That was amazing. And that he was just helping them have their yeah. romance. And it's like Tristan gets banished and Brangian gets va- banished and you don't really know why. Mm-hmm. And then like Guinevere finds out and then Isidrold is somewhere else but not sending letters anymore. I hope we get more of that storyline. I want to know what's happening with her. Like we don't know, right? Yeah, we don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just Brangian's like, well, she's alive because Brangian's visiting her in, in dreamland. dreams. Um, but we don't know what's going on. I, know, I did want that. But I love that it was those two instead of Tristan. And he was just, like, helping keep up the ruse. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> like, it's fine. It's good. You guys he have your good. thing. Yep. <laughs> so that was really cute. And, and I want more as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good read. It was good. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. Me too. I am, well, obviously excited for the next book. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. What are we reading what next? Are we, yep. <laughs> We're continuing with the series. We're reading The Kingdom of Copper um, by S.A. Chakraborty. So we read City of Brass Mm -hmm. and had a lot of thoughts Mm -hmm. on it. So this is book two in the Devabad trilogy. And yeah, we're gonna... I'm ridiculously excited, as you know. (laughs) Yeah, you really like this series. I do really like this series, and it has not disappointed in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm sure that will continue through the second book. Um, which I am a little ways in. It's so nice. I love it. I, okay. Anyway, come back next week and, and you'll hear all my gushing about it. Yeah, but it'd, it'd help if you have read the first book. 
<laughs> yeah, or at least rewatch our mm-hmm. Facebook Live on it. You could do that. We we summed that one up pretty well. Because the end of that one, end of the first one is oh wild. Gosh, and so wild. This one, it's just... Is equally wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's stuff and going it like, on. Oh, it doesn't pick right up. It's like a long gap. But anyway. Is it a gap? It's oh. like, a, like a five-year gap. Okay. Have you, have you not started at all? I did, but I don't remember most of it. I'll remember oh, okay. it. Like, I'll read it, and then I'll remember. I'm like, oh, yeah, that happened. But, like... Yeah. Because the prologue is, like, five years later. Oh, because the prologue has everyone in it. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. prologue has everyone in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so definitely tune in next week for that one. Mm-hmm. Do we want to mention what we're reading after, even though we don't have a book to display? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're reading Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan, and we don't have it to hold up. But we will. But we next will. week. Yeah. Um, so we're taking a break from fantasy. We're going to fiction. Which I'm excited because I don't think we've done a lot of fiction yet. Not really. So this will be fun. Yeah. It'll be good. It's a pastel color. I mean, no, it's, it's like, not. It's, it's dark a hot, pink. Hot pink. I would say hot pink and black. I'm, I'm still, it's more. It's... I'm putting this still more pastel color for you, Jen. I don't read a lot of pastels. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Anyway, I think that pretty much is the end of us this evening. (laughs) We'll see everyone next week. All right. Bye. Bye.